reprises on Act Two of Jimmy's Birthday, starring John Payne as Joe Harding. When Joe and Martha Harding separated after sending their son Jimmy to a military school, they didn't tell Jimmy about their separation, postponing that unpleasant task until, before they realized it, it was time for the boy to come home for his birthday. Anxious to avoid spoiling the youngster's holiday, Joe and Martha are pretending that there's been no break in their relations, even though Jimmy's action has led them to believe that he knows the truth. At the moment, they're all just finishing dinner. Gee, Mom, that was a swell dinner. I'm stuffed. You haven't told us anything about school, Jimmy. How's it going? What do you think of the other kids? Well, I'm sure glad to be home. That isn't exactly answering your father's question, Jimmy. Can't you be a little more definite? Well, a lot of the kids liked it better than I did. Why, son? Well, I don't know. But some of them don't like to go home, even for Christmas. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. Some of their parents are divorced. Respect. How come people get divorced, Dad? Well, it's, it's hard to say. Why do people get divorced, Martha? <sighs> well, it's, uh, it's a little difficult for kinds of reasons. All pretty hard to understand, I guess. I'll say so. What do you suppose starts it? Oh, well, like what? Now, what could ever make you and Dad want a divorce? Look, Jimmy. Um, what, Dad? Tomorrow's your birthday. It's going to be pretty exciting. You better get a good night's sleep. Okay. Well, good night. Huh? You mean go to bed now? But, Dad, after all, I'm 12. No, you're not. Well, practically. You're 11 until 2.35 tomorrow morning, so get going. But I'm not sleepy, Dad. Honest, I'm not. You'll get sleepy. No, I won't. Besides, the other kids at school get to... Jimmy, I know how you feel, but just tonight, get yourself a big sleep. Your mother and I, we'd like to... Want to be alone, huh? Okay, Dad, I get it. Good night, Mom. Good night, Jimmy. Good night, Dad. Good night, son. After talking with all those other kids, now I guess I'm a pretty lucky guy to have two swell parents like you. Good night, and happy birthday to me. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Jimmy. Jimmy. Well, we got through today. Yes. It isn't much fun fooling a child, is it? It hasn't made me feel very gay. Just 12 years ago. <laughs> I'll never forget that ride to the hospital. <laughs> the driver didn't want to let me in the cab. Had to do a real sales job, then. And a cop stopped us for speeding. But as soon as he found out we were going to the hospital, he led the way, remember? Yeah, with his siren screaming. We were pretty prominent people that night, Martha. We must have broken some sort of record on that trip. Yeah. After all that, Jimmy decided to wait another six hours before making his appearance. Yes, I know. I was there too, Joe. Oh, sure. But you were able to lie down and wait. I had to walk the floor. I hadn't thought of that. Oh, well. He was worth it. Oh, he's worth anything. Yeah. You've been a good father, Joe. I've wanted to be, Martha. I've wanted to be a good husband, too. No comment? None that you haven't heard? It isn't right, Martha. I'm afraid that I... I'm not going to say that it isn't right that two people have had so much in common should drift so... Common for some talk, of course. I wasn't aware of it until you told me. I'm sorry. Oh, sure. Sure, you're sorry. I'm sorry. A few days, Jimmy, will be complete. Please, let's not... We argue. Let's get divorced. Let's break up a home, but let's not argue. Is there any point in it? No, I guess not. Have you seen a lawyer yet? No. Why not? Well, I thought I'd put it off until sometime after Jimmy went back to school. I see. There's no particular rush, is there? How should I know? It wasn't my idea. I should have expected that. What? That you'd blame me. I didn't blame... Oh, what's the use? Come on. Good morning, Martha. Good morning. I'm sorry about last night. Forget it, Joe. Mm. Had a few myself. It's been pretty rough trying to... Pretend that you still love me. To act perfectly normal so that Jimmy wouldn't notice the difference. It hasn't been the happiest birthday we've ever celebrated. No, it hasn't. Joe, that's a lovely negligee you gave me. I really do love it. Wanted, so I took a chance. You know, it's the first surprise you've given me since we were married. I'm glad you liked it. 
I did. I wish you'd thought of it a little sooner. What? <laughs> Nothing. Where's Jimmy? That's what I came in here to talk to you about. He's sitting in the big chair near the window. Looks as though he's been crying. Crying? Yeah, I thought you might know what to do with it. Oh, what did he say? Nothing. I didn't question him. Do you suppose he knows what's wrong between us? Well, he couldn't have any other reason for crying, could he? None that I know of. I thought we'd better talk to him together. Then if he, if he does know, we can both try to explain it to him. Thanks, Joe. For what? He's my son, too, you know. Yes, I know. Well, come on. Hi, Dad. What are you doing over there in the corner? Just sitting and thinking. About what, Jimmy? Oh, things. Such as what things? Oh, us. You're, you're not a very happy character. I guess I'm not. Are you disappointed with your presence? Oh, gee, no. That's part of it, I guess. You gave me everything. I'll never forget this birthday. I don't imagine any of us will, Jimmy. Oh. <coughs> I don't want you two to be unhappy. Oh, Jimmy. Sometimes things like this happen, Jim. No one's to blame, really. I'm to blame? You. Oh, no, darling. Yes, I am. How long have you known about this? Since the day before I came home. Who told you? The commandant. He's the head of the school. And, and where did he get his information? The other teachers. The, the other, other teachers? Say, how many people know about this? Just about everybody at school, I guess. Why didn't you tell us sooner, Jim? I didn't want to spoil your fun. And anyway, there's nothing you can do about it now. No, I guess not. Now that we're all going to be home together, I promise I won't ever fail again. I know you won't, son. Yes. But how have you failed, Jimmy? That's what I've been talking about. That's why I was expelled. You were expelled? From school? Yes. I'm sorry, like I said. But I'm kind of glad, too. Glad? Yes. Because now I can stay home with you. Oh, dear, you can't. Why not? What your mother means, Jimmy, is that you... Well, you can't give up this way. You'll have to go back to school and stay. You can't just quit, Jimmy. But I didn't quit, Dad. I just didn't make passing grades. You can make up your grades, Jimmy. I'll help you. It won't do any good, Dad. I think it will. I'll go back to the school with you, and we'll have a talk with the commandant together. Gee, it'd be swell if you would, Dad. Now that I've been home and seen you, I know there's nothing to worry about, so I'll be able to keep up with my class and... Where are you going, Martha? To my room. Please don't follow me. I don't feel very well, and... Well, I just want to be by myself. She cried? I didn't notice, son. Boy. Women sure are funny. Yeah. Very funny, Jimmy. It's all I can do to keep from laughing. Well, let's get to work on your books. I want to know what I'm talking about when we see the commandant tomorrow. Yes? Oh, I, I wasn't expecting you back, Joe. I thought you might like to know how Jimmy and I came out at school. Well, naturally. It might have been easier if... Well... Let's go in and sit down. He's a fine boy, Martha. Of course he is. I wish you could have seen him standing there before the commandant, not cringing, not making excuses, just admitting he was wrong and asking for another chance. Everybody should get another chance, Joe. Oh? Even me? Even me. The reason I came to tell you about Jimmy, Martha, was that if you could... Well, that is, if... If you would give me another chance. You've had your chance, Joe. Huh? Our pretending, at least my pretending, ended when Jimmy told us he'd failed. I see. I knew then, when you stepped in to take the load on your shoulders, the way you've always done it. I wasn't pretending to love you, Joe, to need you. I do. Oh, Martha. I've missed you terribly. Oh, and I missed you. And Jimmy's missed us both. He'll never have to miss us again, will he, darling? Never. Next time he might not fail. The 
curtain falls in the final act of Jimmy's Birthday. Our star, John Payne, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Medical school graduates, here's important news for you. The U.S. Air Force Medical Service is offering commissions to medical school graduates about to enter internship training at approved hospitals. If you're eligible, you'll be commissioned as a first lieutenant in the Air Force Medical Reserve Corps. You'll complete your internship at a civilian hospital of your own choice with full pay and allowances. Get full details on the intern program today. Write to the Surgeon General, Washington 25, D.C. Now, once again, your host, C.P. McGregor and our star. John, I was talking with William Pine of Pine Thomas just the other day, the producers of your last two Paramount pictures. What did he have to say, C.P.? I brought this up because I know our listeners would like to hear an off-the-record, behind-the-scenes conversation. Well, as you know, they have been in business for over nine years. Yeah, I know. In all the nine years, Bill Pine said, we have never worked with a finer, more cooperative person than John Payne. We're very excited about him. Well, that goes double, C.P. I think both of them are great people. They've been mighty nice, and I, I like the type of pictures they give me. Yes, and so do I. You did some musicals with Betty Grable and June Haver, didn't you? Yes, I enjoyed them, too, but uh, I kind of like the rough stuff. I think it's more natural for them. I think so, too. Now, you take Captain China. That was released right after the first of the year, wasn't it? Well, that's what I mean. It's a rip-roaring sea story, plenty of action, suspense, and, uh, and romance. Supplied by Gail Russell. Now, how about your latest Pine Thomas picture? Well, that was made for Paramount, too. It's called The Eagle and the Hawk. Rhonda Fleming, Dennis O'Keefe, and I co-starred. Uh, what's this one about? Eagle and Hawk is an outdoor historical adventure drama in Technicolor. And lots of action. It sounds good, and I'll be looking for it. Well, C.P., here we are talking about Pine Thomas, Paramount, and my last two pictures. How about you? What are you doing here next week? Next week, John, and ladies and gentlemen, I know that we have scheduled a very special favorite of yours, Sonny Tufts. Sonny will star in a rip-roaring comedy romance titled... The Man from Medicine Bow. This is the story about a Westerner who goes to New York with nothing on his mind except peace and sightseeing, but winds up throwing fists and matching his marksmanship with gangsters. Be sure to listen. Well, that should be a good one. I'll be listening. So long, C.P. Goodbye, John. <laughs> be sure to join us, ladies and gentlemen, when Sonny Tufts stars in The Man from Medicine Bow. Till next week... Thanks for listening. And this is C.P. McGregor saying cheerio from Hollywood. the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script was by Bill Hampton, with the music of Eddie Dunstetter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.